Good morning, Kids Connection. This is Mrs. Michelle, and I am here from Sacramento First Church of the Nazarene. And last time we spoke, we talked about the temptations Jesus faced in the desert. He did not give in to one of those temptations. And it was tempting. Remember, he was starving, and they said, that Satan came and approached him and said, we know what you can do, show it, prove it. And he said, we do not test our Lord, our God. So we're going to talk today about how we can build our lives on the strong foundation of Jesus Christ. But first, let's do our opening prayer. Here we go. Everybody ready? Eyes shut. We all know what to do. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful day, this beautiful weather. Lord Jesus, we know you are in control. We know that we don't need to worry. We always worship instead of worry, Lord Jesus. I pray for good and wonderful, strong health for everyone who's watching, all of the kids who are watching, their grandparents, their aunts, their uncles, moms and dads and brothers and sisters. Lord, we keep praying to you because we know this is a really different time in our lives, but we also know it will pass because you're in control. We pray that you continue to give us not only good health in our bodies, but good healthy minds so that we are being creative and we're making good use of our time with our families at home. Lord, I pray that you open our hearts, open our minds, and open our ears to God's word. We want to hear the word, understand the word, and most importantly, live your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So as I said, today we're going to talk about building our house, our lives on a foundation, a strong foundation. So as you guys know, we're talking about when Jesus was here on earth and all of the things he did. And he often traveled and used stories to teach people about the kingdom of heaven and how to follow God's word. One of these stories, the one we're talking about today, was about a man who built his house upon a strong rock and another man who built his house upon sinking sand. And I'm pretty sure you can guess what happened. So Matthew 7, 24 through 27 says, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So the rains came down and the streams rose up and the winds blew and beat and beat against the house, and yet it did not fall because, you guys know why? Because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, doesn't live them, doesn't use them in their daily lives, is like a foolish man who built his house upon sand and the rains came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. So you guys are thinking, okay, that's great. That's a storm when we're talking about a house, but what kind of storms might we face in our everyday lives? We have storms. You guys know it could be something like a challenge of having to move to a different neighborhood where you're going to miss your friends and change schools or losing a pet or like we're having to do shelter in place. That might be a struggle for a lot of you, not being able to go out and see your other family and friends who aren't in that house with you. So why are these things so difficult for us? And how can we handle it when they come up? Jesus says that we are to hear his words and put them into practice. So how can we do that? There are so many things we know and we hear, right? But are we able to do it? Sometimes it's a struggle, it's a challenge. Well, I know the Bible says to be slow to get angry and to be kind to each other. And that is always a great start. When we're thinking of how to deal with the problem, being angry certainly does not help us get closer to a solution. But prayer absolutely does. Praying not only helps us slow down, and be calm, but it also is an opportunity to listen to what God has to say to us. We talked about that before. Prayer isn't just asking, asking, asking. We sometimes have to repent, say we're sorry. Sometimes we have to just yield and listen to what God is trying to tell us, right? And sometimes we can ask, obviously, for help. So there's lots of different th ways that we pray. So a strong foundation, that's what you build a house on, cement or rock, something strong, not something soft like grass that's going to sink or sand, especially. 
It's just like our lives. We have to have a strong foundation. We have to listen to the people who are raising us, what they're teaching us right from wrong. When they're telling us that we know you want this, but it's not good for you, we have to remember that they're doing what's best for us. And the biggest part of our foundation, of course, Jesus. He must be the foundation for us to have a stable and strong and healthy life. So build your house upon a rock. Matthew 7:24. We've got a great craft coming up. It's a lot of fun. I'll give you a little sneak peek. We're gonna break, we're gonna build the houses. We're gonna build the houses, and it's got a bunch of little um, nice, simple supplies that we use. We're just using stuff from around our house, right? We don't have access to go to school and get all of our supplies. I'm not at church. I don't have all of my cubbies around me. So we're going to have a fun craft and I hope you stay tuned because after the craft will be our wonderful cartoon lesson that will give you a fuller view of the story that we heard today. Be blessed and I will see you in a minute with our craft. Hello boys and girls and here we are ready for our craft. As you can see I love to use our simple supplies that we have at home. So I just have some markers and crayons out. Um, an old toilet paper tube and if you have more than one that would be great because you can do the house that's on the rock, you can do the house that's on the sinking sand, you can make a whole little village of them actually. I've got tape here that's not um, necessary but it actually might be useful depending on the kind of uh, the size of your roll in your paper. And then I've just got my markers. I chose some different colors I wanna use. These are the kind of fancy shiny rocks a lot of people have to put at the bottom of either a candle holder or a flower vase. So I grabbed some of those because I always have those lying around. And I also just went to my backyard and got some cool looking rocks and rinsed them off. They're still a little dirty, but that is okay. They're just beautiful. Got all kinds of different little things. I think this is a, actually was an old piece of brick that got worn down in the rocks. So there's lots of cool stuff in our backyards that we can find. So to get started, all I did was take a piece of paper, just a full size, and I love to recycle. This was an old piece of paper that I had with hole punch in it that no one was using. So I just quartered it. I folded it in half one way and then in half the other way, and I cut it. Or you could even just do that a couple of times and then just rip it into your squares. And again, this is some old music paper that was too small so we are recycling that. I'm going to take one of these squares and this is how we're going to make our roof. See how we've got a nice little pointy roof on our house? So I'll put that here so you can see what we're doing. So I took this and it's very easy. I folded whatever the writing side was on the inside so people don't see that. So our roof is nice and clean so we can decorate it however we want. Folded it in half, very simple. The opening is on the bottom. We need to have an opening to stick our toilet paper tube into. And then after it's folded in half down, I kind of find the middle point. You can, you can sort of find the middle point by just pinching it or you can eyeball it and fold these down into triangles. So make one little triangle corner here. It looks like a little dog ear. And fold another here. Doesn't have to be perfect. Mine certainly is not. And then I have the little flap left over, which is great because I am going to fold this up. This is how we make paper boats. It's also how we make paper hats. I'm gonna fold this up so that it holds these two pieces together for me. Now, if you wanna just use tape, then you can actually take these pieces and fold them to the inside instead if you'd like. You can fold the back one up to hold your your roof together so it doesn't fly open on you. And if you don't want this part showing, this is what I did. I just took and folded this side to the inside. And just tuck in any extra little corners so that you have your roof ready to go. So that's gonna be your roof. Again, you can use tape if you want to to keep it shut. I just folded mine and I thought that was good. It stayed nicely. I'm gonna tuck these corners to the back and that's gonna be our roof. And if you look at the bottom, it opens up for us, it's all ready. So I'm gonna pop my little roof over to the side and wait for that, looks like a boat. I'm gonna take one of our empty toilet paper tubes. This is such an easy craft, everyone has these. If you say, oh my gosh, we just had recycling day and my, my grandma threw them all out, you can always take a paper towel roll and cut that, take a knife or have a grown up help you, or you can push it, smush it, it's okay because we're gonna smush one side anyway, you can smush it to cut it with scissors to make it um, the length you want. You can make some taller ones to look like apartments and you can draw lots of windows and doors. 
So this is the easy, easy part. We're gonna take the, just one end of the toilet paper roll and we're gonna just smush, gonna push it into the middle like we're folding it. And I'm gonna smush this side. So again, it's not perfect. Mine aren't even smushed at the same length, same direction. Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna kinda keep pushing so I have a little bit of a triangle showing here and here. And now that I've smushed, I'm going to smush one more time, but this time I'm gonna put my triangles together. And you can see how I'm forming the top of our house. Now you can put tape here if you want to to keep it shut. I didn't because I knew that by just sticking my house, my uh, little roof on there, it would keep it shut. And it does, but you can also put tape on the back of your roof to keep it down. Let's go ahead and put a little piece of tape on this one for those of you who want to do it that way. You can see how we're doing it. I'm going to take and just tape this down so that our roof stays shut and that our top of our roof lays nicely on there. See how that, that is, you can just see how easy that was and how cute that is. The only scissors I used, you can use it to cut the paper that we folded. And you can also use scissors to snip your door to make your door open a nice welcoming house here. Of course, you don't want to cut all three sides or your door is going to come off. I just cut one, two pieces so that I can fold my door open. Now, I did all of this just with markers. You can see I didn't do the back. You can do the back so you have your full version of your house. It'll be 3D. You can turn it around. I just did the front. This was all just markers. I made it look like the lights were on in my house. I made little shingles on my roof. Now, you can say, I don't want to color all of that. And you don't have to. This looks like a beautiful taupe house color, a nice tan house color. So what you can do is you take your roof off to color it. And if you want, you can just draw your door and color your door and your windows. But if you've got nice, this is not, um, I just have white right now, but you can take your paper and color the paper or get colored paper and cut out your door and glue it on or tape it on if you'd like, however you want to do it. So you can take gray, you can take any colors, do your roof. As you can see, my roof is not perfectly done. I just went, I thought it would look kind of cool just to zigzag my, my gray on my roof. So that's what I'm going to do here. And maybe if you have a nice tabletop that mom doesn't want to get crayons on or grandma says, hey, be careful with that. You can always, this is a card table I'm using, so I'm not too worried about it. It's nice and old and good for crafts. You can also take an old placemat and put it down to protect your surfaces. So I did my roof. Now I'm going to take my house and maybe I want to, this time I want a pink door. So I'm going to go ahead and I, again, I just eyeballed it. I just took and so there's the top of my door. I'm going to close my door and maybe I'll put a doorknob here and I'll put some, I'll make it a really fancy door, make it striped. Okay, you can take and do windows. You can do whatever you want on your house. Or like I said, I man, I kind of would like to have a paper towel roll. I think I'll have to do that next time I'm out of paper towels because it would be really cool to make an apartment complex. So you can put your windows. And as you can see on my other house, I went ahead and put some little shrubs outside. I did some, see if I can get close, you can see I did flowers over here little bushes over here. Be creative. You can make it look like your house. You can say, hey mom, can we go outside so I can really get a good look at our house? Or you can just imagine and do whatever you guys want to do. You can even cut another little strap, scrap of paper and put a fireplace up here on top. That would be cool to put a nice little fireplace here. But these are our houses. You can put some, if your mom lets you go outside and get some sand or dirt, you can do that for your house on the sinking sand. I wanted to do mine on the rock. So I've got, let's try this big rock here. Let's see if it'll let me balance a house on it. I don't know. We'll give it, oh, I did. That's so cool. I've got my house on the rock. I love that. And as I said, you can get other rocks to put around it. You can move your house on a rock like this. And then I also, for this house, I'm gonna do the really pretty little rocks that I've got. And often you'll find these in the cupboard in an old flower vase sitting at the bottom and they work just great. And that can be my house built on the rock. So I hope you guys enjoyed this craft. I know I did, I had a lot of fun doing it. And I might, as I said, make a 
a little tower. That would be really cool to make an apartment building. You guys be blessed. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. And please stay tuned for our cartoon video of the full lesson. I'll see you next week. The King and the Kingdom Jesus traveled, teaching about the kingdom of heaven, and crowds followed him. They didn't know yet that Jesus is the king, but he taught them how to live as people of his kingdom. People do good, said Jesus, because of the good in their hearts. People do evil when evil is in their hearts. God wants to make your heart like his heart. Don't worry about things like food and clothes, said Jesus. Put God first in your life. Obey Him. Trust Him. He will make sure that you have what you need. Jesus taught this prayer. Father God, Your name is holy. Reign on earth like You reign in heaven. Meet our needs today. Help us obey You. All power is yours forever. Then Jesus told a story. One man built his house on a rock. A big storm came. Because the house was built on a rock, it did not fall down. Another man built his house on soft and shifting sand. A big storm came. Because the house was built on sand, it fell down with a crash. The things I teach you are like the rock, said Jesus. Put my words into action, and you will be like the man who built his house on a rock.